Well, well, well. Hi everyone. I hope you're doing fine and you're having a nice day. Here we are with another problem and another solution. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So the problem is taking inputs in Java. Uh, the problem starts when yeah, you want to take in an integer, but the user inputs in a string or a character, a boolean or something other than what you want. So what happens at that point is that your app crashes and it's not exactly what you want. You don't want your app to crash and stop working. You want it to continue and you want it to get inputs unless the user has uh, typed in the right input. So uh, here is how. Let's just give it a try and see how we can do it. Let me just uh, clean this up. Let's consider the clean file. Make main method. And it should be in class, definitely. Class main. Put a main method inside. So, for getting input, we need a scanner. Yeah. Call it in. Make a new scanner. System dot n. And for you to see the problem, we want to take in an integer put input and a string to see what happens. Let's see. So I wanted to take an integer, but I input and a string. The thing happens is an error. The error is called input mismatch exception. So the, uh, as its name implies, uh, what we wanted to take as an input is different from what the user has typed in. So once we, uh, solve this problem. So to solve this, we need a while loop because we want to take input as long as the user hasn't typed in the thing that uh, we need. So we need a while loop that is always true and it's always going to work. It's always going to be repeated unless we break and get out of it and we do it manually. So we need a try and catch, you know, exception handling, we need a try and catch block. We use illegal input mismatch exception. We call it exception. We catch it this way, and here we show a message to the user. You have to type in an integer. You have to type in an integer. So that's an alert so that the user knows that he has done something wrong and he will uh, be prompt to do it again. So taking the input, we, we declare, a, declare an integer called number. And we, we kind of specified here. And then we say the number is what we get from the user. Next integer. And here we see. And if it is fine, if it doesn't throw any exceptions, because uh, our exceptions can only be generated here. So if not, if no exception is here, we will break and get out of this. And we will print our number that was got from the console correctly. So let's run this. So we type in 10. We get 10 back and that's fine. But what if we type in a string? What if we type in a float or a character? Let's see what happens if we do that. Oh, as you see here, we have an endless, endless loop. But we don't ex expect that. Look, we don't expect that. Because logically, we say that we take an input, if it throws an exception, we will go to the cache block. And we print something, then we go back here, we go inside the cache block, we should get input again. But as you saw here, no time was given to the user to write the input again. Oh, that's an issue. That's a tricky one. What happens exactly here? What happens exactly here? The problem is that uh, the character that we first uh, inputted to the console, we typed in is not cleared out of buffer and it's still there and it is considered 
the input of the user okay so if it do not clear the buffer it is still there and it is considered the uh, input that the user has given and as long as that is wrong we will be in an endless endless loop of uh, try and catch so what we need here is to clear the buffer to to do that we come here and say next line what it does is that it clears the buffer of our scanner and this time we will be good to go let's check it out so so we type in something in a string oh you have to type in an integer it asks us to once again type what we wanted we once again build, do this we input a float Oh, it has problems with floats too. But if we input some integer like 25, it'll be fine. And it will print us 25. So here is how we can take inputs and make sure the user is uh, typing in the input that we want. And we are not going to crash. Or our app is not going to crash because of the wrong input that the user types in. So that's it for today. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this and it helped you. Catch you later.